allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. very excited that we have the Brandon High School student report back on our agenda. So whoever's presenting, welcome. Hi. Hi. Um. Is that you, Piper? Yes. Okay. okay. Very good. I just I thought I recognized you. <laughs> Alright. My name is Piper Kraus and I'm the Vice President of Brandon Student Council. And then I'm Emma Losey and I'm the President. So our we have a committee that I started last year called Leadership. And this committee its goal is to get or is to improve the relationship between council members and then also to improve their leadership skills as a whole. Um, and we've done a few activities this year. Uh, one of them is called like Discovering Core Values, where we all sat down and like picked apart adjectives from a list that describe a leader and like picked our top five. And then we went around and like talked about why we chose them and why we didn't chose other ones. And I really think that activity like made us like be able to see different there are people's different leadership styles in the room like a good team bonding activity and also made us like work better together. And then we also have done uh, a scavenger hunt just for like team building. And we did hand turkeys for Thanksgiving for what we're thankful for. And then for the service committee, we do a service project every year that reaches out into our community in different ways. And this year's was called generosity amongst the gener or across the generations. So we made 76 care packages for assisted living homes in our community, and then 20 baby care packages that just had like basic hygiene products and like fun stuff for the people who would receive them. So we also have the spirit committee that's in charge of um, all spirit things. And we also wanted to make spirit like bigger this year. So we started doing letters to Santa so we have the elementary kids write letters to Santa, and then all of the council will write back to them as an elf, and then we'll like write them like three or four paragraphs, just like saying like we got your letter, like things are really great here, and like just talking to them. And we think that's a good way to like bring up spirit in like the entire town, and not just in um, our school. And then this is this week's Holiday Spirit Week. So today was Christmas Pajama Day. Um, tomorrow's Holiday Character Day. Uh, Wednesday is Winter Wonderland, so we're gonna wear like our uh, scarves and our clothes. Um, Thursday, and we have to wear the pickle dough, like the new And then Friday, what we do We have a new committee this year called CSI, which stands for Student Community Involvement. And they're basically just a committee in order like, to spread connection through like, the council and the student body and the community, so just getting everybody connected. So in order to do this, we have bingo boards where when you go to activities like some of soccer games or like some are a charity week, like fundraiser or something, and each time you go to one of them, you get a hole punched in your card. And then when you get a bingo, you get a gift card or something, the first few people to get a bingo. Then we also have a student news board in our school. So everyone knows what's going on. This week's charity week, uh, we decided to do um, foster, a foster family closet in Oakland County. And like a bunch of things that we've done is on December 8th, we did a, a can drive and bake sale at BP's. And then December 9th, we did a Bullfrogs fundraiser. Um, and then the, the bigger ones were 
September 4th, during Christmas in the Village, we did a step of us with uh, toys that the community could donate. Um, on Monday today, we had breakfast vendors, which means that we sold donuts. And then we have a movie night that started five minutes ago, actually, to where people could come and watch the movie. Uh, watch a movie and pay three dollars. I think they're watching Forest Chris. And then tomorrow is Teacher Baylor do, which is you would pay money in the top three classes, get to go play in the gym instead of like going to class. Um, and then you're going to have the basketball game. And then Thursday's Rent to Student Council. So all of the student council members got put on a list, and then all your friends could pay five dollars, or if they wanted to outbid someone, they would have to like pay more than that. And you get to follow them around to three of their classes that day, and just attending all the friends. Um, and then Friday we have breakfast under the again, but this time it's very like this. And some stuff outside of just our council would be the athletics for this fall. We had two state health qualifiers, which for golf was Leah Lafleur, and she was also first in our league. And then for cross country, Nick Schilling was also a state qualifier. Some accomplishments for the coaches were that the girls swim and dive coach, Ryan, got rewarded for Metro League Best Coach of the Year. And then for golf, Jason Rumble got the Regional Coach of the Year. Then we had three students who made all state for sports this fall. Aiden Reynolds made third team, Herbie, Herbert Martin made honorable mention for soccer, and then Gina Trebuzio got first team for football. And we also had 42 scholar athletes. And 11 of those scholar athletes got all league, too. So other things that, we're, that are going on is there's a choir concert on January 13th, a band co concert on January 20th, and then the ball play is was rescheduled to the 15th and 16th of September. And then that's all we have. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask too. Thank you for the overview up front. I think that really helps all of us understand going forward, you know, some of the, the baskets of activities that you have going on within your council and, you know, the, what comes from them. It's, it's a lot easier for us to understand and very, very interesting. That's a lot of work, a lot of work, and we appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, now we have public comments and questions on agenda business. There are some seats in here. You can sit over there too and come on in. Okay, we have two individuals signed up to speak. Um, Shannon and Frank, is it on agenda business or is it meant for after, for just public comment? After the judge, though, should be important, though, I guess, after. I mean, um, really, there's a Okay, let's do it now. <laughs> All right, first on the list is Shannon. Um, so, hi again. Um, so again, the biggest concern is communication. Um, I know there's only three minutes, so I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but communication is been a problem and it continues to be a problem and it's unacceptable. Um, there's little things, there's big things, and because of the lack of getting any response um, when I do call and ask questions or concerns, um, not really getting anything back. And the fact that we're not finding out things for weeks after is unacceptable. And it makes me question, what else do I not know about? Um, it's concerning, again, to send my son to school. Because um, what is being hidden from me, if I have to find out things from other people other than the school, 
um, that's not okay. Um, I was here last week and I still don't have questions answered. Um, and I, I don't think that's acceptable. We should be called. Um, and it should be a priority, especially when there is such high tension on a couple of subjects. Um, so one, I would like to know when I'm getting addressed. Um, and I do have some other concerns that still are not addressed. I'm not going to talk about them tonight because it's going to take too long. Um, and um, what are we doing about improving our communication moving forward? And it shouldn't be for a three week period. It should be continual all the time moving forward, not just because I'm here and bugging you. I shouldn't have to be here bugging you to ask for communication. It should already be automatic. Thank you. Frank? My name's Frank Wise. Same issue as last time we did no communication. You guys go behind closed doors and do your thing. Um, as far as I know, from what I've heard on the streets, because that's the only information I get, is the superintendent uh, decides to leave on Friday. You guys came out and put a laser. Later, letter after the fact. As far as I know, board minutes should be uh, the next day at 10 a.m., maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You're telling me it takes five to eight days to get board minutes. And obviously, they're still not on there as of tonight. You know how board systems work? They're still not on there. I want to know who's on the uh, police report on the day that I'm being told now the 23rd of November. We're not talking about what happened 10 days ago, 11 days ago. We're talking about the past, because we have to clean up the past before we go to the future, which I said that last time. We have a super, huh? The police report is November 9th. November 9th, though. Yeah. Not the 23rd. I heard my daughter comes home and tells me there's, there's 20, or my friends tell me there's 23 people on the list. Now I'm hearing it's over 200 a couple of days ago. I go to a volleyball game. And sure, yeah, the security there was nice. Great. I'm still talking about the past. The past. Do any of you guys have kids? I don't get this. I have cars. I live in a court. Seven, seven houses in a court. And I have people coming down now from the last meeting trying to find out where I live. I have camera systems on my house. For that reason. And you guys just want to go into the future. I don't blame the, the acting superintendent. I don't blame what you did two days ago and further. I want to go back to November 8th, November 23rd. I want to know who's on the police report. If it's the principal of the middle school, then he should be held, account, held accountable just like the superintendent that walked out with his tail on his nose. And if we have to pull that superintendent back, we will do that. There's a reason there's not 500 people in this room tonight is because you guys keep stop hiding the facts. You just want to press on with Christmas and press on with the other things. And then eight months from now, three months from now, you're not allowed to tell me when this so-called person comes back and I have to kiss my daughter every morning I drop him off to the school because I don't have a choice to buy a new house. I don't have a choice to put him in another school right now. Do you understand that I'm tired to be pushed away. You raise your hand to do security things. I'm never going to get invited to that. I know that. I'm playing the game with you, but I want facts. And then we're not allowed to address anybody. We're not allowed to say names. We're not allowed to do any of this. Oh, well, my lawyer thinks differently, okay? My lawyer thinks differently. I have three minutes to save my kid's life. I have three minutes to get to that middle school to save my kid's life after a volleyball game. I think she finds out that she's on a hit list. I gotta drive her home, talk to her in a car, and explain to a 13-year-old. I'm sorry, a 12-year-old. She hasn't turned 13 yet. About what a hit list is. 
how important, how upset, and how am I supposed to control myself, which I do. I have family on the police force. I have family in schools. And this nonsense is happening in my own backyard? Do I have to bring my daughters into the next meeting? Do I have to bring my son into the next meeting? I think the board should be held accountable. I think the middle school principal should be held accountable. And we want information. Because a month from now, three more parents are going to find out about their kids. Three more are going to find out about, Daddy, what's a hit Thank list? You, Frank. Bobby, what's a hit list? Thank you, Frank. Is there anybody with their hand raised, Maria? No, I do not have any hands raised. Thank you. All right, we're moving on to Acting Superintendent Dan Stevens' report, including safety update and oh, COVID. I had something I wanted to say. I don't know. Oh, I thought you meant after the, the next comments. No, no, I was going at, to. Oh, okay. But if you want to go. No, go ahead. Okay. And I, I wanted to I say this, because this is. Seriously. Yes. I, I do have something to say, and it's because if there's been so many people asking what I can do, or I want to help. And I do have two suggestions and one request. My first suggestion is I want parents to really think hard about social media and the consequences of that one click, post, or video. Please consider that right now, that one click your child does could disqualify them for scholarships have colleges not accepting them, deny them jobs, and even worse, have the police knocking on your door telling you that that click, post, or video is being investigated as a threat. Yes, you know your child, and I do not. You have, if you may have the tolerance or the stomach to hope that it will not be your kid. I am not telling, parent, telling you how to parent nor do I need any excuses as to why you chose to have your child swimming with the sharks or roaming with the wolves of social media. It is how much belief you have in your kid to not be taken in or instigated. How responsible are they to understand the long-term ramifications of that one click or video? My next suggestion <laughs> has to do with these sharks, and I'm calling them sharks, wolves, predators, instigators. They are egging your kid on. They are egging us adults on by posting comments that are bullying, false, and preying on you and your kid trying to suck us all in. <coughs> these people have said these kids' name and want to lead a charge to have zero tolerance and advocating for removal of kids without all the facts, all the evidence, or just to be a rally person. I am asking our community members not to tolerate and support them. I am asking that they never be elected to our school or community leadership positions based on their rants. You know who they are. Most are complainers. Please don't fall victim of their rhetoric. What they are doing and posting is wrong. And see here, I'm even getting angered over what they're doing. They are our bullies, our sharks, our wolves, and they're preying on all of us. They want us angry. And please, don't email me asking if I'm talking about you. I'll save you the time. If you think I am, then yes, I'm talking about you. But here is my request. I need all of you to support our teachers trying to teach in your kids, trying to learn. We need to give all our support and help to stabilize the classroom experience, again, so our teachers can teach and our kids can learn. 
I am asking all parents to send an email to your kids' teachers. Tell them, I will not allow, and then fill in your kid's name, to be disrespectful in your classroom. You are, they are expected to obey your classroom rules. Please notify me of any issues so I can make sure that they will not continue to occur. Then you can add if there are any areas they see your child needs improvement. Make sure you work with your child and children at home to get them to be productive student, students in the classroom, not destructive ones. You've got to listen to your teachers when they tell you concerns. Please refrain from saying, not my kid. That is what the parents basically said in Oxford. I can tell you, if you follow my two suggestions and my one request, your kids will succeed. I have seen these teachers be such a positive influence on my kids that I never saw their career path they chose and what they are in. I'm telling you it was the teachers. I have hundreds of these stories from other kids and parents of Brandon graduates. And if you don't believe me on this teacher advice, listen to, our, listen to those who are on our Alumni Wall of Fame, who listen to the video of those events when they got inducted. They will say it was a teacher and or a coach who got them or kept them on the right path. I thank you, all of you who are helping or have offered to help. We have experts running our school buildings and keeping it safe. Please don't send the board hate emails because of what I'm saying. Lisa and the board are very busy people. But if you cannot find help on what your child needs, we offer our support, and yes, then email me or the board. We will see what we can do to assist but I recommend starting with your own school building resources, tutoring, BGYA, local churches. It's my understanding even Courtney McLaren's got a new initiative, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of it. And I'm just asking to please support the good people who are here to make us better, not bitter. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Um, my only comment had to do uh, somewhat similar to what Diane is mentioning. However, it has to do with all of our, anybody who's listening, my own, including me, use of social media as adults. And many times we're giving advice, as we should, to our kids about the use of social media. I think now is, uh, like no other time, is that much more important that we're aware of how we as parents and as community members are using social media. While it's difficult to hear the public comments, I commend everybody who comes forward to share their thoughts, makes calls, addresses the audience that at least can be aware of the issue and move forward with a possible resolution. By its nature, social media reaches out to friends and family. So if there's an issue, or a concern, especially if it's highly sensitive, to communicate that in, in short order or in a you know a novella type fashion on social media, again, by its nature, it's going to friends and family, generally. That circle may be concentric or not with some who can help with the issue. But all the while, it's providing a perfect platform for misinformation, um, the game of telephone we're all familiar with, uh, depending on the sensitivity of the issue, could be hysteria. Some I've seen gone as far as to mention children's names when someone's riled up and they're choosing social media to turn to as a solution, mentioning other people's children's names in a fashion that should should be paused and, and considered not to. So I guess my general message is when adults are using social media, would we ever advise our children 
to go to social media as a problem problem solving venue. I'm going to go with close to 100% of us would say no. I can I can identify some exceptions to that, but generally the answer would be no. It's not what I would be advising my children. Pretty sure nobody else would be saying if you want to address the folks who can address something, social media is not the way to go. You need to pause, consider, is it just the need to vent? Is it the need to, you know, a little bit of self um, gratification that you you need to, to learn and, and feel affirmed that your your feelings and thoughts are valid. I completely respect that. I do. I just don't suggest that social media is the spot to always do that. As often it doesn't lead to a solution, it creates bigger problems. So I just suggest that all of us highlight in our minds before we're engaging in social media, which is awesome. It's a great tool, it's a lot of fun, but we pause for just a minute and say, why am I posting what I'm posting? And what's the ultimate result of that? So think about the advice we give our own kids for that purpose. That's my only, only yes. comment. Thank you. All right, now we have the acting superintendent's report, Dan Stevens. Thank you everybody, and thank you everybody in the community for being here tonight. Um, to me it shows that you really care about this community by being here, so I, I thank you for that. Um, I wanted to start off just a little bit about uh, giving everybody a COVID update. You know, COVID is still prevalent in our community, so I wanted to give everybody an update on where we're at with the Brandon School District, and the, uh, the truth is right now we're really, really lucky. We do not have hardly any COVID cases within our school system right now, which is, which is awesome. And that fluctuates and it goes up and down, but right now we're having a really good, it's a really good time for us when it comes to COVID. Um, those cases, uh, according to our website, I think are like three total in our district right now. So we're really lucky right now when it comes to the area of COVID. Another thing we're very lucky to have um, in our school system right now is we have a nurse that just joined us in our school system. And I, and I don't know if everybody knew that. Um, so we're very lucky to have this, this lady, Michelle, who is helping us with not only COVID cases and not only help, uh, helping us contact Trace and, and, and contact families, um, but she's gonna go a step further and really help our staff, help our staff in areas such as, what do you do when the student has a seizure or a, a, a medical emergency or a medical issue of some kind? So she's here for us, um, for the whole district to help us with that. Uh, and we're really excited about that, um, to have that extra person here, that extra professional here. Um, and not only that, like I said, to train our, um, to train our staff and, and how they would react when it comes to anything. So, so we're really lucky. Um, going along with that, um, we're also very lucky to, uh, we're implementing the Brandon School District Quarantine Test to Stay program. We're really excited about this. One of the biggest things I've heard as a high school principal is when my kid gets quarantined, what do they do for their education? They're out for up to 10 days, and that's a long time. So we're really excited to have our school nurse be part of this quarantine test to stay program. In this program, a kid that is a close contact while at school can now get tested the next day. And if they test negative, they can come back to school. Um, and so we're setting that program over up, up over at the ITAC Center. Obviously, they test positive. We don't want them here anyway. We want them to quarantine and go through the process. But, but if, they're, if they're negative, now they can come right to school and, and they can do that um, every day for seven, seven or eight days, apparently. Seven days, they can do it every day um, for seven days. And so that way, we're keeping everybody safe by testing them daily. So we're really super excited about not only that program um, to test our students that, for those that want it, but now we can get them back into school and, and they can get the education face to face that we know that they all really and truly need. And I want to um, thank Carly Stone, who's really spearheaded this program um, and done an amazing job behind the scenes bringing that to uh, the Brandon School District. So thank you, Carly, for that as well. Also, the, the next biggest thing in the wake of the Oxford tragedy, um, you know, we've been working really hard in the Brandon School District 
um, to make sure that we're up to par with our safety standards. And the good thing is, I mean, the, when I go through and I look at all of our buildings and where we're at with our safety protocols and safety standards, the good news is we can, we can already check off most of the boxes. Um, so our, our, our uh, administrators, our teachers, our staff, they're already well equipped for this. But you can never go too far. Um, and so we've been really working with our staff extensively to make sure they have all, everything they need, that they have all the knowledge that they, they need, that they have all the training that they need, so that we cannot um, only react in a horrible situation, but more importantly, prevent it. And, and so we've really spent a lot of time doing that as a, as, as a district. Our staff was all trained, retrained, I should say, this past Monday. Um, we've been working with them during the time that, we, that our students have been off um, and doing a lot of great things with them. Um, so we're going to move forward as a district and do all those things that we need to do to make sure that your kids will be absolute um, um, safest that they, they can be. Some of the things that we are doing, I just want to highlight these things because many of our families don't know this, um, the things that we're, that we're doing. Um, this, this week, you know, we didn't know what to expect with students coming back. We had most of our, most of our students came back, we were averaging about 88% when it comes to attendance. That's pretty darn good. Um, and our students wanted to be back. They, they wanted to be here, most of them wanted to be here. They wanted to be back. We've added security guards um, uh, at, at all buildings this week. Um, and we're going to continue that for the middle school and high school. But the pre premier security team who's doing a fantastic job. They'll also be at, at, at athletic events and other events that are after school. Um, so taking that next step, next step. Um, I've got a lot of parent phone calls and, and emails been reacting to every one of those. Every, every single opinion is important. We wanna, and, we, and we look at every one of those and we bring that back to the administrative team and talk about everything that's a concern. Because if it's a concern to you, it's definitely a concern to the Brandon School District. We're working with the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Officer Pence over here has been fantastic. Um, putting in double the amount of hours that he probably usually does and should. Um, not only him, but his team. You know, the Oakland County Sheriff's Department has been very vis visible in all of our buildings. Um, before school, during school, after school. So we, we, uh, we also thank them for everything. We got some things in the works too. Things that we're, we're, we're continuing to talk about and even make this place a, to make every building as safe as it can be. Um, I don't want to get into too many details because for obvious reasons, if you get into too many details about what security measures we, we, we are implementing, then that lets the people know <laughs> that, that, that the measures that we're taking. We don't want um, possible perpetrators to know what it is exactly um, we're doing, but please know um, that we have, uh, we're moving forward, we have a whole committee and group of people that includes parents, teachers, staff, um, to move forward and to make this the most, um, the best place that we can be in terms of safety and security. So that's, uh, that's, that's my report. Okay. Thank you for all you're doing, Dan. I know you have uh, stepped in at a time that's crucial and we appreciate that. Next on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. I have a roll call. Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes, yes. Diane Salter, yes. Kimberly Smith Collada, yes. Hillary Stakowski, yes. Jeff Zilke, yes. Lisa Calumna, yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, for anybody who's following along, we're now on item seven on the agenda, and that leads us to information and discussion items, the first being the education report by Carly Stone. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring uh, three items this after or this evening. Okay, this um, the first of which is um, for information this evening as well as an action item later on this evening, a, a new economics textbook for the high school. Our current economics book, the copyright is 2003, so um, in a couple weeks, it'll be almost 19 years old. Um, and so uh, to ensure that we're providing our students some current and relevant access uh, to um, important information, we wanted to look at refreshing the textbooks. Uh, both Matt Prevost and Dennis Shannon are both teachers that teach uh, economics in our high school both of which uh, had three different textbooks to review. Um, they took both, or all three textbooks to a group of students 
Um, they went through a process. Um, I believe you have access to that information, the questions that were asked, um, and then you also were able to see the students' responses to uh, the text that they were, they enjoyed the most, or thought was most engaging to them. Turns out, it's just an upgraded version of the one that we already had. Um, so Prentice Hall Economics Principles and Action is our current text, and it's just a Prentice Hall was purchased by Savas, and so this is Savas's Economics uh, Principles and Action Copyright 2022. So what's exciting about this book and what really um, had the committee uh, the most excited is the whole beginning of the book starts on personal finance, mm -hmm. and so we talk a lot about personal finance and ensuring that our students have some financial literacy before they leave high school. This was the only textbook that provided students access to a really deep and thoughtful personal finance um, avenue, and it starts the book off with that right away. So that was really what kind of put it over the edge for both the students and the teachers, and so that's the recommendation we're bringing to you this evening. Uh, two class sets of books, um, which would be uh, 72 books, which also have a six-year bundle of, of tech, so our teachers are able to provide access to our students online, to the textbook, and to resources, um, as well as an additional eight books just to have on hand in case we needed uh, one should something happen to one of the other 72. So the proposal is for 80 books um, for the purchase, and then we would actually be implementing and using that second semester because economics is a second semester course for us in the district. So that is slides uh, before you see me. So that is the first item. Um, the second item I have for you is actually a question. Of course you can. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. This is the one I'll take there. Um, are there, is there a next, I always want to know about like the next, so I can compare the where our needs are. The next do we way. have a next um, refresh? refresh we you? do. We do. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, so the next one on the list is our U.S. history book. Okay. I believe those are like circa 1993. Mm -hmm. Don't quote uh, me on that. And a lot's happened since 1993 in U.S. history, so um, that is the next one. When, when speaking with the Social Studies Department and asking them what our priorities were for textbooks, they said economics first because U.S. history is a year-long course, and so they wanted to have, after we got this one in, they wanted to have all second semester to so vet various okay. uh, text opportunities so that in the fall we would come, um, we would be able to launch with a new U.S. history book for the coming school year at the high school level. Thank you. So that's what's next. Thank yeah. you. Because this sort of came up then to our, my quick question is, this applies to our typical, I say the, the econ general classes or the history, but it's not applying to AP economics. I'm the only reason my daughter didn't do AP economics, and it's like those, that's current, that's because they, they have to pass that test, correct? Yeah. So this I is think, not, yes. this is and separate track. Correct, and College Board dictates what text we have to use for those AP courses. They actually give us some proofs set of books to use for those. Um, this is a this is a district decision. The AP courses are dictated to us by College Board. I mean, when anybody parent to get misconstrued that that's this is our this yeah. is a class for graduation requires a graduation requirement course that all students would okay. have access to for academics. Yes, Melinda. And, and just because it probably goes without saying, but I'm going to say it because we have people in the virtual world in here. That's not the only source of resources that we use to teach U.S. history. We are current with our teaching methods, correct? Thank you. But that's, well, and that's why, and that, did you notice me say this was a class set and yes. not an individual book yes. per student? And that's intentional because our teachers are exceptionally thoughtful. Thank you for bringing that up. They do use multiple resources, but they do like to have um, something in the classroom uh, available to students. And so we feel as though it's time to upgrade those books and then have the teachers put the same way. So thank you for that, Melissa. That's thank you. Okay, so the next item I'm bringing uh, to you is actually related to our SR3 conversation as well, but this is a familiar document to you. It is our um, extended COVID-19 learning plan. This is something that we established last year prior to the school year beginning for state legislation. And we, we um, updated it monthly or we voted on it monthly to that data plan. Um, for SR3, which Jane and I are going to speak to in just a moment, we are um, expected to update this plan for the 2021-2022 school year. So this plan just has some noticings in it or some additions in it for this school year. And the most significant of which is that our secondary plan and learn from home uh, platform looks a little bit different this year than it did last year because we're utilizing the Adventum platform. 
for our secondary students, 612, where last year it was brand new from home teachers for all of those students. So that is the significant change in here. All other items stay the same. If you read through it, most of the light items say for 2021 and 2021-22. So you can see many things are common for both years. The most significant change is that transition to momentum. So um, this is just um, an, an updated version of the plan so that we have it current for 2021-2022. And upon um, approval of this plan, it will be updated and uploaded to our district website where the other plans currently sit. Any questions on that one before I get too excited again? <laughs> okay, all right. And so the next item, I do have a PowerPoint. Uh, Jan and I have been working on this along with the team here um, for ESSER 3. And I'm going to leave the slideshow here, but I asked Jane to jump in at any time um, if I um, am uh, missing anything. So you've heard us speak to you before in various board meetings about ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and this is the third of the trilogy here. This is ESSER 3, um, and this is um, a relief, an emergency relief fund that provides dollars specific again to the COVID-19 uh, recovery um, as we continue to move out of the pandemic. Um, this, like the others, is a federal grant. The initial application is due to the Michigan Department of Education this Wednesday, and the expenditure period for this grant is September, it goes all the way to September 30th, 2024. And so Jan and I and Diane, the team, these expenditures we're looking to have be spent in the 2022-2023 school year and 2023-2024 school year. And then um, with any of these grants, there are some allowable expenses and some not allowable expenses. And so we were provided a list of allowable expenses to ensure that we were thoughtful in the spending and that we would have um, no problems. Um, for this grant, there are several compliance components, one of which is ensuring there's an updated COVID-19 learning plan that I just shared with you. Um, another compliance component is that 20% of our entire allocation needs to be specifically dedicated to learning loss. And learning loss is defined in a variety of ways, um, but that is outlined to us from the state of Michigan. We have to ensure as a school district that we maintain equity um, amongst our buildings, ensuring we don't cut one building uh, more than another if there were ever to be a time and budget changes or FTE changes. We're just uh, very thoughtful in ensuring there's equity across all buildings in the district. And then lastly, districts must engage in meaningful consultation with their stakeholders. Um, to speak specifically to learning loss here, 20%, as I mentioned, um, the overall grant allocation needs to go to learning loss. Of the five allocated items, and I don't have them memorized, but two of which specifically connect to the work that we're doing here in the district, and that is supporting students and families in distance learning and tracking student attendance and engagement during remote instruction. And so that really is our Brain and Learn From Home program, utilizing our mentor program and also our Brain and Mentor teachers. And so that is where we intend to um, allocate that 20% of our funds is to the brain and from home costs, not just for 22-23, but also for 23-24. Um, and each year, these funds are carried. Jane, did I miss anything? No, I would just add that their allocation, as a reminder, is about a little over 1.9 million, so the 20% is about 380,000. Thank you. <coughs> So the other compliance piece was stakeholder feedback. Um, we were very thoughtful and intentional about inviting a variety of stakeholders. The grant uh, asks us to do so. And so on October 28th, we did have a virtual meeting in which we invited a variety of folks, teachers, parents, um, BGYA um, folks, administrators, in which we shared an overview of SO3 and its allowable expenses. And then we asked them for feedback on a, on a survey that we put together in response to our presentation. After that stakeholder meeting, we then took that survey live out to the whole district. It was uh, sent out to families through uh, buildings um, e-blasts or newsletters. And it was also on our district website for families to uh, participate in. 
We did have over 220 responses, which we're very excited about. Um, many, many parents, staff members, administrators, and we have some student feedback as well. Top areas that were identified in the survey were additional staff to support learning loss and intervention, additional social emotional support, summer programming, such as credit recovery, um, weekly STEM or enrichment camps, reading, writing, and math camps, K-8, and then lastly, tutoring. I think it's also important to note that technology and facility upgrades were also, also mentioned in the survey <laughs> feedback. However, with additional grant resources, like our E-rate, I don't know if it's a grant, Jane, you have to help me with that, but it's an E-rate, okay, yeah. federal money from E-rate, um, and then also our recent bond uh, collection, we're able to utilize funds from those, and then we can then have a bigger chunk there to allocate for these other items that were identified by our stakeholders. So our next steps um, is that Jane and I are going to submit the initial application on December 15th, which is Wednesday, uh, and we're gonna be targeting those focus areas that I mentioned earlier. Um, we will, it's very possible and likely that, that we will come back to you um, in January, February, February to give you more specifics on how things uh, lay out and finalize all of our expenses. And then once that's happened, we will then start beginning planning for implementation, whether that be the posting of new positions, whether that be creating and designing or some of programming, whatever that may be. But you can look forward to hearing back from us specific to this in the future. Uh, this is here just to give you some information as to where we're at and what we plan to do next. Any questions? Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Sure. Okay. No questions on this one. So when it comes to ESSER funds, I feel like it's important to connect parents, people in our community with information on some of the things that you mentioned. Things like what are allowable expenses? What are those compliance items, which you went over very well. Is there a way to make sure that that is either published on our website, easily accessible, or linked out to the correct state resources that outline allowable expenditures? I think that's something we can definitely look at um, just to help um, you feel comfortable too. When we put our survey together for those that were not in our stakeholder meeting, mm -hmm. we did list what those allowable expenses were, and those were the items that folks were able to select. So we made sure people were selecting items that we would be able to do. I saw that. And but I think sometimes in the narrative and in the discussion, okay, people lose sight of allowable expenditures and what those categories are. Okay. How what we're doing falls into those categories. Okay. So and I think it's really important when we talk about SR funds to really make that kind of drive that home. We can definitely look into that. If I may, I think it, it fits in the context that we all needed to visit. Um, and are reminded of um, frequently that you know this financing of school finances is it's a weird area you know it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, weird, it's a weird area it's a weird area and that you know what can be spent for what purpose all of these things so I, I think if I may you know it goes in that whole basket of um, you know I've been on the board now for I'm heading into my tenth year and there's still once in a while something's mentioned and I wonder how that reconciles with this piece over here and how does it displace it because it's a push and pull and all of this crazy stuff. So I think it's it's just part of that whole education piece and keeping it front and center toward that ever never never ending education process that goes for all of us. So yeah. To Lisa's end I'll add to um, the very cognizant of the quote funding clip that we talked about last mm -hmm. spring. So this ESSER 3 money and how it um, is affecting general fund mm -hmm. and making sure that in the process that we don't set the district up for two or three years, that cliff, so to speak. So we're really, um, right now we have several items in ESSER 2 money, which is about 800,000. We have to make a determination, especially with our Brand and Learn From Home program, how big that's going to be next year because some of the ESSER 2 expenditures will have to automatically flow into ESSER 3 so the general fund doesn't get hit with some of those things. So we're really making sure we're protecting general fund while adding in programs but keeping track of where we're at. And, mm -hmm. um, and this grant is going to be spent over a two-year 
school period, but three summers. So, at any rate, we're, we're working on that to make it all fit. Thank you. Thanks to both of you on that. I know it's not, it's a lot of compliance and tracking and everything else. So, thank you to both of you. That's huge, huge to ensure that we're using that money properly and able to receive it. Um, Okay. Okay. Is everybody all set? Do you have any questions for Tom? Um, all right, then we have the finance report with Jan. Um, I just talked about SO3. Right. Um, I'd like to add something instead of being SO3. Um, last month we had talked about the truck, and I forgot that I had asked Mark after last month's meeting to attend this month's meeting to explain better to the board about the truck and our 48 year old truck and why. Um, Mark would like to purchase a new one, so he reminded me today that um, I invited him, so if that's okay, he Please. would like to address the board and explain in more detail the use of a new truck. Jan, can you just give us a recap of where we were last time? Yeah, before? I had presented a, um, I believe it was a purchase item to go out for bid for a new um, tractor, I should call it. I'm calling it a truck. I should call it a tractor. A new tractor. Um, again, ours is very old. The new tractor, Mark had uh, a couple quotes already, but it was going to be used. Um, it would give us the ability to utilize a blade that was bought several years ago to push snow. It's really going to help us with the snow removal. Um, we currently, when we get a big snow, we have to contract an additional um, a company in to come help us. We would not have to spend the money to do that, which is a good thing. And um, this vehicle would be used for other purposes besides snow removal. Mark can talk more about that, but he would be using it uh, spring and summer as well. So yeah, basically use the tractor for one year. Um, so as some of you know, we do Mark. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but sometimes it's easy to forget that we're speaking to an audience out there as well. Would you mind terribly coming up to the podium so that maybe the mics have a better chance of picking up the good things you have to say? So again, we utilize the tractor whole months a year. Um, we use it for ball fields in the summertime. We use it for brush removal. Um, there's, there's a fast way we run until the sewage treatment plant with it. Um, so there's multiple uses. The, tractor. the one we have right now is 45 years old. Um, so I'm looking to upgrade the tractor in order to utilize what it is to plot 13 years ago, um, the, the big snow blade. Um, and the problem I'm having right now is staff. Uh, we have a gentleman right now that is our utility driver, and we utilize him to help us remove the snow. Um, and he has now turned 62 and decided to collect Social Security. Mm -hmm. So that being said, he can't work the amount of hours that he did before. So I'm, I'm kind of caught between a rock and a hard place as far as manpower versus machine power. Um, the tractor will yield, or if, if, we, if we do go forward with that, the tractor will actually take the place of two people. Do we have a, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to put the right slides uh, together. Do we have a person then to actually operate the yes. tractor? One of us would operate the tractor, one of the existing people okay. that have um, The company that we use right now is able to uh, drive his equipment here, so all the heavy equipment that comes in here and moves them back. Um, he's able to um, bring that without trailer hand, which is less expensive for the district. Um, and he's on the three year plan to retire. How much do we spend on contracted services that would be replaced by this that new tractor? That I do not know. Okay. Um, but it, it, it depends on some law. Sure. So it, it's a mother made call basic for snow. Right. It varies year to year. Because the main contracted services are the snow removal. Yes. Everything else we take care of with our own equipment. Well, we, we do 99% of all the snow removal now ourselves. Okay. Um, it's just when we start losing parking lots, we're losing parking places. We have to be able to, have, yeah. be able to move it right. back and our trucks don't do that. Right. Um, this, this machine would actually in, enable us to do it. Um, so there would be no contact at all. Um, on the other side of this, it's going to save a lot of wear and tear on the vehicles that we have. So we don't have to replace those near as fast as we had in the previous years. Because we're not going to have to replace them. Right. Okay. Um, 
we're trying to ask of those that equipment exactly. more than we should. Is that what it comes down to? Yep. What's so forty eight years? Is that, <laughs> is that is that the typical life yes. for a, a tractor? Uh, so if this purchase was made, we can yes. suggest that it would be Yeah, it would be a, it would be a very, very long time. Um, that's why farmers when they have tractors, they don't turn over a year. Sure. They they drive them and drive them and drive them and drive them and drive them. Um, and they're going to put a lot more juice on them than we're going to do But the reality is that we need something bigger because of the amount of asphalt that they have and the amount of sporting or uh, sport facility that they have. So. Did you say we were going to keep the old tractor too? Is yes. That, okay. uh, is that a necessity? Well, we're going to try to use that just for salt. Gotcha. Um, just because salt just tears equipment apart. Gotcha. Um, and last year we went through almost 300 tons of salt. Wow. And presumably if you try to sell that 48 year old tractor, it's not really worth uh, no. applying toward the price. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking, I don't know the tractor. Right. Right. There's right. no good trade in value. No. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to write a check to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And deliver it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions I can answer? And then at this point, we're still looking, the, sure. the request to the board at some point is to go out for bid right. for this. It is not anything, okay. I right. think Janet said that there was some questions that needed to be answered, and I said, well, I'm more than happy to right. answer them. We always appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can I go back on my memory that the sketchy as of recent? Did we ask in the last meeting that we wanted to see what the cost analysis was of the snow plow and things like that? Can I have that? Because I think we requested that the last time we talked about this, and I haven't seen anything. I haven't even mentioned it. I thought we asked for the cost benefit analysis of comparing the two. I need to see that before I even move forward on anything of, of what manpower and the contract. If we're doing 99% of snow removal, I kind of want to see just the numbers and dollars and signs just so that we're making a sound, responsible decision here. So we could get that from the last yeah. time we requested. And that's before. Rod Betts, and we use him for other things besides snow removal. So um, we're going to have to get, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to look at all of the um, invoices and break that out. Yeah. So we can't just like look at that vendor and say, okay, this is what we said. Right, or if he, can, so. if he can break down his own invoices and provide a report for yeah. you so that you don't have to do that work, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, because yeah, I remember we did ask about that, yeah. so I appreciate that. I, I just couldn't remember if we did or not, and I just wanted to make sure I clarified that. So, and there, there might it sounds like there might be some financial traction with the fact that um, it will replace personnel. So, adding in the mix that delta yeah. of where we're at with personnel and what we're saving there, mm -hmm. and kind of putting it all in that. It is a, a little bit gray. And right, understood. Know, yeah, with the, the, you know, snow was Astrid. lighter. This year's snow yeah. could be heavier, but we can yeah. we can come but up with the personnel cost. Uh, there's yeah. a way of you know that it relieves um, that line item a little bit. Then right. including that in the analysis would be really helpful. With it, I understand there isn't going to be an asterisk with right. probably four caveats at least, but just for a, a platform for discussion. That Certainly, would be great. I'll take care of yeah. that. I, I would assume over because of the life of the tractor that we would definitely break even after right. well before the tractor was well before um, 48 years yeah yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So. excellent so. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's hoping right so I'll take care of it yeah thank you okay, thank you any other questions regarding the potential request for bid for a tractor that would help us on the next turn of okay Jan yeah, the next thing I, um, there's an action item tonight, um, action item A about the um, bond resolution. Just wanted to um, quickly explain that um, um, the bonds will be sold probably in January, so cash will come in, setting up accounts and all of that. Um, we have election costs that can be paid for out of the bond if we approve this resolution and any security measures that the board may choose to um, have us move forward with before February. Um, we can pay for out of the bond once this um, item A is approved. It's basically saying what we spend now out of the general fund, once the bond proceeds come in, we can take those bond proceeds and reimburse general fund. For security, anything that was in the bond, obviously, security measures were part of our bond application. So security measures and the bond election fees would qualify. Okay. 
Does anybody have any questions regarding the resolution that's on the table for tonight regarding it, paying for these expenses just described by Jane? So I, I guess I have a question. Yep. So what would be the purpose in that? Because I mean, what's if you're just taking out one account, putting it in another, what's the purpose? Well, it, the purpose is for general fund. So if we, if the board were um, to choose to go forward with any type of security equipment before February, we, if we, if we didn't have this resolution, we would pay for that out of general fund, and that it would stay in, as a general fund expenditure. Okay. This resolution allows us to um, basically reimburse general fund. It's something that maybe could have been in the original bond application. It wasn't. It just is something that wasn't maybe was looked over. So now we're in a situation with potential purchases, and um, it was, yeah, it just gives us the option to do that. Okay. So it's a timing issue. It's an option it's that's available issue. and timing right. issue. <laughs> in, in light of recent events and perhaps yes, some yeah. potential security purchases, that gives us the option. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Jan regarding any of the items that she spoke to? Okay. Thank you very much, Jan, for everything. Always appreciate it. Okay, with that, we're moving on to item eight on our agenda, and uh, which is our action items. The first action item is the approval of funding for security purposes. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the resolution to reimburse the general fund for any bond-related expenditures made prior to the sale of the bonds as presented. Support. Do we have any discussion on this matter? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote, please? Melissa Clark, yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Hillary Stokowski? Yes. Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Lisa Calhuna? Yes. The motion passes, thank you. Next uh, action item is the approval of additional Premier Security Services personnel. May I have a motion? Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve two additional Premier Security Services personnel indefinitely as presented. Support. Any discussion on this item? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Kimberly Smith Palaga? Yes. Hilary Stokowski? Yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Lisa Caluna? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we have the approval of Premier Security Services additional work days. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve Premier Security Services personnel to work nine additional days, December 7th through December 17th, 2021, as presented. Second. Perfect. Any discussion on this item? Thank you, Premier, for lining in work with our district, and thank you, district, for lining this up. Yeah, acting very quickly. So hearing no further discussion, may I have a roll call vote? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Kimberly smith Kalaga, Yes. Hilary Stokowski? Yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Lisa Caluna? Yes. Motion passes. Next action item is the approval to purchase high school economics test books. Jeez, I'll get there. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve to purchase high school economics textbooks at a cost of $12,223.88 as presented. Support. Any discussion on this item? Hearing none, may I have a roll call? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. Hilary Stokowski? Yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Lisa Caluna? Yes. Our next item uh, is the approval of the VHS choir trip to New York City. And I believe, uh, well, let's have the motion first. Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve the high school choir out of state overnight trip to New York City on March 25th through the 28th, 2022, as presented. Okay, and with discussion, I believe that we have. Yes, we do. He's out here. Oh, hi, Mr. Bremer. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being with us to, discuss, to uh, present some thoughts on this trip for the choir. What can you share with us? Um, what I can share uh, shortly is that out-of-state trips 
um, specifically um, for ensembles are a wonderful opportunity um, because we get to show Brandon um, the quote unquote national stage. Um, but these students also get the experience of taking the music that we work on in the classroom and in our district on the road. Um, we get to perform for more than just our family, our friends, and our community. We get to perform um, on a stage with adjudicators and receive comments, much like we do in MSVMA um, district festival. Um, but we get to take this um, and make it a travel opportunity and a growth experience in that regard as well. Very good. It sounds like an outstanding opportunity. I would agree. It's an excellent experience for um, travel and for to show their talent. Does anybody have any questions for him or further discussion? All right. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and, and sharing those thoughts. Um, we'll move on to a vote at this time. May I have a roll call vote? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes, yes. Kimberly Smith Colaga? Yes. Hilary Stokowski? Yes. Jeff Silkey? Yes. Diane Zalter? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Our next item is the approval of the Human Resource Report. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the Human Resource Report as presented. Support. Any discussion? Hearing none, may I have a roll call? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Kimberly smith Colaga, Yes. Hilary Stokowski? Yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Motion passes, thank you. Uh, the next item is the approval of the extended COVID-19 learning plan. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the extended COVID-19 learning plan as presented. Support. Any discussion? Hearing none, um, may I have a roll call? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes, yes. Kimberly Smith Colaga, yes. Hilary Stokowski, yes. Jeff Zilke, yes. Diane Salter, yes. Lisa Kalamuna, yes. Motion passes. Our next item approval of the superintendent search firm consultant. Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve John Silveri, Michigan Leader Institute, as the permanent superintendent search firm consultant as presented. Support. Is there any discussion on this item? Yeah, I think that just briefly this will be who we, we talked to them, I think, a year ago. And now we're going to get them to come in and get our permanent superintendent in as soon as we can. Any further discussion? Okay, may I have a roll call vote? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Kimberly Smith Colaga? Yes. Hilary Stokowski? Yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Lisa Cabahuna? Yes. Motion passes. Our uh, last action item, um, item I, is the approval of the bond resolution, which was just discussed by Jan. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the bond resolution to reimburse expenditures made that are bond el eligible prior to the sale of the bond as presented. Second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, may I have a roll call vote? Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Kimberly Smith Colaga? Yes. Hilary Sikowski? Yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Lisa Camelona? Yes. Thank you, the motion passes. Item nine on our agenda is uh, citizens' input. Marie, do you wanna, I'll grab this if you wanna see if anybody. Oh, sure. who have um, noted their name as wanting to speak during this time. The first is Mr. Warren. <coughs> Just to give everybody an update, uh, I got an email from Oxford and there's another incident in 
middle school there. Those are the schools out for tomorrow. My daughter's an Oxford student, side of this stuff. But I'm here to talk about still the same incidences. <clears throat> now it's it went from my five my ten year old <clears throat> to my five year old. She comes home telling me, Dad, kids call me names. I told her just just brush it off. But it's like almost not every day, but it's starting to happen a lot. Anywhere from calling her fat, you're stupid, you're ugly, that is unacceptable. Like now when if, if it was the tables was turned, let's believe I would get a phone call. Your son is acting out. Your son is doing this. It works both ways. My daughter is scared to go to school now just because of the incidents at Oxford and now being called names. And I mean, as a parent, I, I came to y'all, did the right thing. I told my daughter, tell the teacher that I do, they don't do anything about it. Just like y'all said, I heard the speech that you were giving about the teachers. They have to respect the teachers. The teachers have to respect these kids too. If somebody's coming to y'all, telling y'all, I'm being called fat, I'm being called ugly, that hurts these kids. And I'm doing my part as a parent. And then I get a, a letter for truancy. My daughter, she's sick a lot. I can't bring her to school because they'll send her home. And if y'all look at all my other kids' records, attendance, the most perfect attendance, so I don't know what else to do. Like, you're not supposed to send them to school sick. So I don't. So now I have a paper saying, if, if she keeps missing school, and I'm one of the parents, I do not let my kids get on them at all. And if my kids act up, let's believe, I'm going to get on them. I do my part as a parent. This has to stop, seriously. I'm asking y'all nicely, could y'all please have these teachers do the right thing with these students that are coming to them bringing to their attention that these kids are harassing and bullying them. This is like the eighth time I've been to the board meeting and nobody's doing anything. Now it's happening with me. For the ones that don't know, I have a court date because I harass, I threaten somebody. I'm a Christian, I don't threaten nobody. My exact words is I'm coming for you with the news channel. That's what I've said because that's the truth. This is a waste of time, a waste of the court's time. And when it all comes out, like I said, all these false allegations, they gotta stop. They have to leave my family alone. Like, I, I, I'm doing my part as a single father. I've been raising my two oldest for 12 years on my own. My 10 year old, been raising him for seven years on my own. Been raising her for five years. I have, I, when is this gonna stop? My kids need uh, education, and that's what I'm here for. To make sure they get the good education, and not everybody, I love that dude. Awesome mm -hmm. principal, awesome. I love him to death. My son is graduating this year because he looked out and did the right thing. There was an incident in high school. He took care of it the right way. Asked me, well, if you have any more questions, do you want me to just feel free? I said, no, sir. I'm, you know, I don't need to call you because you did the right thing. He handled the situation the right way. And I love him for that, for real. I just want my kids to go to school and, have, and, and enjoy going and us to be left alone. She got in trouble. She, she didn't get in trouble. She, she, she pees on herself. She asked if she could go to the bathroom. The teacher tells her no. We, we, we got that taken care of. But today she came home and said, the teacher told me I couldn't go to the bathroom. It's, it's got to stop. She's five years old. And I'm glad she's sleeping right now because I, I didn't want her here. The, the names that she was called. And it, it, it is sad that these kids have to go through this and then it gets swept under the rug or, or looked over. The, that's a good kid right there. I know y'all had your hands full with my son, but now it's happening with her. Thank She's you, scared Mr. to go to school. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Thank you. I hear what you're saying. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> I just need one second. Okay, thank you. Apologies for that. 
Um, Annalise Elliott. What was the time frame that you first came to the to the superintendent? What what year that or what time frame that was? Um, just so I know for my notes. It was the spring of last year. Okay. Um, as it was closing out and finishing, I came to him because I thought the summer would be a perfect time to create a program and work on this. And he told me to come back after the Fourth of July. So so spring of 2020. That was <coughs> okay. I just want to make sure for my notes. 2020. 2020. I'm sorry. 2021. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Just want to know for my my notes. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. No problem. 
Does anybody have any other questions or concerns as we move toward closed session to discuss security procedures? Okay, we're moving into closed session. May I have a motion? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve to enter a closed session for the purpose of reviewing security procedures. Second. Roll call vote, please. Melissa Clark, yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Kimberly Smith Kalaga? Yes. Hilary Stokowski? Yes. Jeff Zoki? Yes. Lisa Kaluna? Yes. All right, with that, the motion passes and we're moving into closed session.